So, so theoretically, we should be ready to fire. What do you do? Hey guys, my name is Nick with uh, Marine Parts Source Specialty Services, and today we're going to be showing you guys how to install a Delco EST ignition system. Um, as you can see, it's a little counterproductive. We have one already installed. We're going to actually uninstall it and then reinstall it, show you guys the steps and procedures um, on putting this EST ignition system in, and then we'll run it and uh, hopefully she'll run great. So you guys are ready? We'll dive on in. So with disassembling this EST ignition, so we can reassemble it so you guys can see how it's done. Uh, we've already pulled the plug wires, uh, the coil wire um, going to a ground and an ignition hot, and then the plug that goes from the module to the coil itself, we've pulled that. So that's essentially where we're at right now. At this point, when you're pulling the distributor itself, you can just go ahead and pull it, right? You can, or, or you can bring it up on top dead center. Kind of like on. pre prep it right now. Okay. You know, do we want to go ahead and pull it, bring it up on top dead center? We can. Okay. So the, the next step we're going to do is we pull the number one spark plug. So you have your odds and your evens. So you've got one, three, five, and seven, and then two, four, six, and eight. So we're pulling the number one plug, which is located on the port side. Take a little piece of, you know, paper towel or shop rag. We jam it in um, that spark plug hole and the compression from when we're turning the motor for us to know we're on top dead center, it will actually shoot that, that piece of paper towel out. So do you think it's easier, Tim, to do this before you pull the distributor, or do you think it, it really doesn't matter, it's just a preference thing? It doesn't really matter. Okay. So you could do this either after the distributor has been pulled, or you can do it like we're doing it, where we have the distributor still in, and we're just gonna, like I said, bump this engine over. I'm just gonna hit the remote start, which is gonna engage the starter, and it's gonna turn the engine over until, like I said, that piece of paper towel shoots out. So I'm just gonna hit it, here we go. All right, you saw a little piece of paper towel shoot out. So we should be very close. Yeah, so there's actually a mark on the harmonic balancer here. So now we are on the compression stroke, correct? On top dead center, correct. All right, so we've kind of done the pre-work, we, 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 uh, prepped this so when we go to drop the distributor we shouldn't have to do that now we can just go ahead and drop it we might have to finagle it a little bit just with the distributor teeth lining up uh, but it should be very close so what we'll do is there's a bolt right here we're going to go ahead and just loosen this puppy up before you do that uh -huh. pull the distributor cap off you just want to take a look at that and so while they're doing it this way, we're already at top dead center, so you can take a look and see where the rotor is pointing Perfect. right now. So we're not gonna- On your old distributor. Correct, right? yeah. So what he's saying is just for the alignment purposes, we'll see which way the direction of the rotor is actually pointing. And then that way, that will indicate our number one position for the distributor. Right. Just a briefly overview, the way we've identified our number one for our firing order. So it's gonna be this one. And if we lift the cap up, it's gonna be roughly right where the rotor is gonna be pointing. So I'm gonna take, I just take a Sharpie. I'm just gonna mark right here on the distributor cap that that is gonna be our number one cylinder. So, you know, if you get the kit, you can't, it gets a new cap and rotor. Um, but I always, you know, I guess just disassembling this, just taking a look inside, looking at the, the points here. Uh, a fun fact that myself and Tim figured out, we had a customer and these modules are extremely sensitive. So we had a customer that kept frying these modules on his starboard engine on his boat. 
and we, you know, we're having a hard time figuring it out. What we come to find out is whoever had done the service for the ignition um, had bent the point here for the uh, rotor upwards, which created actually a larger gap between the points on the distributor and the rotor. And that in turn, making that larger jump for the spark puts more stress on the module. And actually we, we smoked two or three modules because, you know, and it wasn't a drastic bend, it was just enough. So, you know, just that's something to keep in the back of your mind. These are very sensitive um, electronics here. And even, you know, a slight deviation to the manufacturer specifications, just this being bent up slightly created enough gap that it was putting too much stress on the module. So just a tidbit of information there. All right. so. I'm just pulling down, pulling out this bolt here that seats was fitting to hold the distributor in place. All right, so at this point, you'd say we're pretty much ready to just go ahead and pull the distributor out. Correct. So, should just come pretty close to straight up here. And there's our distributor and all of its glory, a little bit of oil. The last piece that needs to come off is gonna be this coil. It's just mounted right to the intake. Uh, that was our last piece at this point. There's no ex ignition system on this engine, so there is no way to fire. But now we will show you guys how to reinstall it. On a engine of your boat, there's a gasket that goes here. You want to clean this surface. This surface actually fairly clean for the most part, just a little bit of oil. And the gaskets right here came off in one piece. Now, if this gasket were to have torn when we pulled it off, you, we're just gonna put a new gasket on it. But this gasket came off relatively clean, so we're just gonna go ahead and drop it in. And I wanna index my rotor towards our mark, correct? <clears throat> correct. So we have it indexed here. And now I should be able to theoretically usually start slightly before the mark. Okay. Because the way the any gears are on the camshaft and the distributor, it's it's gonna draw it in. You'll feel it. Oh I see what you're saying. And you'll feel it come back one tooth and then draw it in. So we're we're pretty much right there. Once you seat those two that that distributor gear, it'll actually turn it about a quarter inch clockwise on you. So you kind of back it up a little further past your mark, compensate for when you drop it. It's gonna turn naturally oh, once it gets in those grooves. That's close to where we were before. So I'm just putting this, so this is the distributor clamp right here. So when you're actually running, the motor vibrates pretty heavily when it's running. So basically it keeps that distributor from moving on you. Because if the distributor moves, it's gonna affect how the engine runs. And so now I'm just putting this distributor cap back on. Should be two Phillips head screws. We're mounting this ignition coil. Again, this is not how I would mount an ignition coil on a customer's boat or a, an engine that's actually in a boat. This is a test engine. It's used and abused. Parts get pulled and put back on it all the time. Um, so this is how we mounted it. Tim just mentioned, you know, he typically makes a bracket that bolts into the intake right here between these two points. That way you can actually use the, the bolt holes provided on the coil to properly secure it. Yeah, so we've stripped the wires. We've got our ignition source here, or not source, but our ignition purple wires. So this, these are gonna be 12 volts essentially. So I use heat shrink butt connectors on anything I have to butt connect marine. And so we basically just put a little flame to it. You can use a heat gun. If you're using a torch, just be careful. Don't hold the, don't hold the flame to it too long because you'll burn the insulation on the wire. And you wanna make sure all your connections are, as the Germans would say, good and tight. Give it a good pull. Make sure you don't just pull it right off the wire because a loose connection creates resistance and resistance creates heat and heat causes fires. Use the proper size butt connectors as well. If the wire's too loose in there, just go down a size in the butt connector. Again, color-coordinated coordination for 
marine application ignition nine times out of 10 is gonna be your 12 volt source key on. Um, if you've got a boat that's had every mechanic's hands in it, the color coordination is probably not gonna matter, so. I'm gonna take my proper safety precautions here because I am using a torch over a fuel tank. So we're gonna just go ahead and close the vent on this fuel tank. We are safe now. Blow, blow the fumes away. We've got pretty much everything wired up except one wire. This is gonna be our ground, which I'll probably just throw it on that grounding lug right here. I'm gonna slide my ground onto here, which is gonna complete the circuit. Um, so we'll have a ground. The engine block's grounded. So if you're needing to complete a circuit within, I would say reason, you don't wanna have a million grounds tied to your engine blocks. But we're completing the circuit here uh, because like I said, this is grounded and this is gonna be our key on. Without this ground, this plug won't work properly. So we've got that, it's nice and snug, not wiggling around, it's on, good to go. So the, the next step is, this is gonna go onto our uh, ignition coil here. This comes in the kit, this is our plug going from the coil to the uh, module here. The black one goes on first. So we'll put the black one on, make sure she clips in. And then the gray one, which is again, tack signal and uh, key on hot ignition. And then that will slide on next like that. The black plug that went on the coil, this is now gonna go over to this part of the module. And then this plug is for us to do our timing and we'll put that in there as well. The next thing we do, plug wires. So we're gonna put plug wires on. Instruction manual that will come with this Delco e EST kit. This, this talks about uh, you know left-hand and right-hand rotation engines. The firing order for, those, for this test engine, we're gonna be using the left-hand rotation firing order, which is gonna be 18436572. And again, like I, like I said earlier in the video, the port side of the engine here is gonna be odds. So one, three, five, and seven. The starboard side are gonna be our even. So two, four, six, and eight. And the, the random number spew I just threw out to you earlier reading that, that is our firing order. So that is gonna be the indication for where we put those plugs on the actual distributor. I've mixed up our, our wires here. So obviously your longer wires, spark plug wires, are gonna be going towards the front of the engine and it's gonna decrease in size as you work your way back. So best thing to do is kind of hold all your wires. Obviously this really short guy here, this is for our coil to distributor. So you kind of just gauge the length of them. So these two are obviously our longest ones. So I'm gonna set these down. And so these are gonna be our number one and number two cylinder because those are furthest away from the distributor. Uh, one is an inch longer, Tim. What do you prefer that longer one go on the port side or the starboard side? I would put it on number two. So the longer one is gonna go on the number only, only because of the way we have. Okay. So, so theoretically, we should be ready to fire. What do you do? What I do? So when we went and ran the engine, we were a little hot on total timing, so we were about 30 to do. Ideally, again, you're gonna to wanna to refer to the engine manufacturer's specification. Like you were saying earlier, most small block and big block Chevys, you're, you're gonna be was between 26 to 30 degrees, total timing, usually. Um, so we kind of wanted to bump it down two degrees. 
With the uh, EST ignition, uh, the ignition module has the built-in advance, so you're not making any adjustments with the advanced timing. It's all gonna be done in base timing. So we were at 10 degrees base timing, and we knocked it down to eight degrees, um, which that cleared it up. It gave us a total of 30 degrees. We're right where we wanted to be for this engine. So to wrap things up, guys, that is essentially how you install a Delco EST ignition system. We went through, pulled the old distributor out, which was the same distributor. We put the same distributor back in, show you guys how to wire it, find top dead center. We showed you guys how to figure out your firing order. Um, and then we showed you guys as well how to set base timing for it. And that's pretty much it. If you found this video interesting or helpful, please like this video and subscribe to our channel. If you guys have any technical questions, you can always give us a call at the number below. And thanks for watching.